This is the ROG Phone 3, the ultimate gaming smartphone. Now, if you've been following the smartphone market closely, you're most likely aware of some of the changes that ROG has done from the first generation of the ROG Phone series to the second generation ROG Phone. Just to give you a quick breakdown, they've made the display faster from 90 hertz to 120 hertz. The CPU was updated to the fastest available at the time. Uh, the memory got a bump from eight to 12 gigabytes. The battery size, <laughs> it went from 4,000 milliamp hours to 6,000 milliamp hours. The camera system got a bit of an upgrade as well from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. And pricing for the ROG Phone 2 was around $900, which was actually pretty good considering what you were getting. And now we're here in 2020 with the ROG Phone 3. And just after taking a quick glance at the specs and some of the features that ASUS has improved on this phone, I gotta be honest, this is by far the coolest, most unique looking smartphone that I've personally come across. So let's check out what's new. Let's find out what's new about the ROG Phone 3 right after this. What does it take to experience a compact, high performance gaming notebook? You want specs that can meet the most demanding tasks like a fast CPU, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, ultra fast NVMe SSD and RTX graphics. You also want something that's lightweight and easy to carry around. How about a robust optical mechanical keyboard with per key RGB lighting and a fast 144 Hertz IPS display. This is a new XPG Xenia gaming notebook. Check it out at the links below and game to the extreme. Okay, so I'm gonna kick things off with pricing for the ROG Phone 3. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the official pricing is for the United States, but I am aware that there are gonna be three variants of this phone, starting with the Strix Edition that starts at 800 euros, and there is a regular standard model that comes with 12 gigs of RAM and five 12 gigs of storage, which is around 1,000 euros. And the sample that I have over here comes with everything that you can possibly throw at it. Now, taking a look at the rest of the specs, this is again an area where ASUS threw everything they possibly can to create a spec monster. So you're getting the Snapdragon 865 Plus SoC with 5G compatibility, up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, half a terabyte of UFS 3.1 storage, dual SIM support, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which is the same size as the ROG Phone 2, so nothing has changed there. So the first thing that stood out to me just after unboxing this phone is the design. I mean, it's obvious. It's a gaming smartphone made by ROG. If you look at their notebook lineup, their peripherals, their graphics cards, they're a class of their own, and this phone sort of follows that trend. You get an RGB logo at the back that's customizable through software. There's also an Aura RGB LED right around the camera that shines a bright light when you install the lightning bumper case. It gives you a matrix LED layout that's pretty subtle, but you can also customize the colors through software, which is pretty cool. You see, this isn't your traditional flagship smartphone with a clean glass back and edge-to-edge -edge display. This is really designed to be practical for gamers, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. As for size, this is a big phone. In fact, it's bigger than my OnePlus 8 Pro, which is already way too big for my hands, personally. So you might have to get used to this form factor, even if you have larger hands. Now, if you take a closer look at the ROG Phone 3 and compare to the ROG Phone 2, not a lot has changed from a physical standpoint. The display still expands around 6.6 .6 inches. It's 1080p plus AMOLED HDR10 plus certified, just like the ROG Phone 2. However, they did bump up the refresh rate from 120 Hertz to 144 Hertz. It's also got a 270 Hertz touch sampling rate. The brightness levels have been improved as well. And ASUS also claims that they've improved the color accuracy on this phone. They say that it covers 113% DCI-P3, but out of the box, I did notice that it exhibits cooler tones compared to my OnePlus 8 Pro. There are different profiles that you can play around through settings, uh, and I ended up going with the standard one because the colors looked neutral to my eyes. Now, you can change the color temperature and saturation levels to your preference, and honestly, I have no complaints with it so far. But let's take a moment and talk about that sweet, buttery smooth 144 Hertz refresh rate, because switching from my OnePlus 8 Pro that features a 120 Hertz display, I personally didn't notice a huge difference uh, switching to the RG Phone 3, but this is still a very fast display. And when you can find games that can support a higher refresh rate, the experience is just unreal, guys. As you all know, I'm into racing games and I've been playing Need for Speed No Limits recently, uh, and it just delivers a smooth experience. Not to mention with that incredibly fast touch sampling rate, 
every touch based input is noticeably faster than my OnePlus 8 Pro. I mean, here's a slow motion comparison between the two and you can tell that the display responds even with the slightest movement on my finger. It's just a beautiful combination of hardware and software. And let's not forget that this still features a flat display, so you're not getting any curves around the edges. Thank you so much, Asus, for keeping it that way. And you're also getting an in-display fingerprint sensor, which works pretty well. Uh, it's relatively as fast as the OnePlus 8 Pro, so I have no complaints in that area. Now, given the gaming brand attached to the smartphone, there are some features that they've improved from the ROG phone too. So when you're holding the phone in landscape mode where the volume and power buttons are located, there are two invisible ultrasonic buttons. Asus is calling this the Air Trigger 3 technology. Basically, you can remap your touch inputs on the display within a gameplay to those individual buttons through Game Genie, which is an overlay that pops up when you enter a game. So that way, you don't have to use your thumbs to interact with the game. Your two index fingers would do the job, uh, and those individual buttons come with haptic feedback as well, which is really nice. Now, with this generation of the ROG phone series, Asus has added support for sliding, swiping, and creating two partitions per button, uh, resulting in a four shoulder trigger configuration. Now, I'm not a hardcore gamer like a lot of you out there, but having played some racing titles and some other games, I'm actually really enjoying using these air triggers because then I don't have to worry about using my thumbs. I can focus a little bit more on my gameplay. And these sort of features make a lot more sense for a gaming smartphone because they are very useful. And I'm sure if you're a hardcore mobile gamer, you'll definitely find these useful. The side mounted ports are one of the signature features of the ROG phone series because you can simply plug in the charging cable while gaming in landscape mode. So that doesn't get in the way, unlike your standard smartphone charging orientation. This port also acts as a hub for a variety of gaming accessories that Asus will be offering, like a gamepad, a twin view dock, and a mobile docking station that gives you access to a bunch of USB ports, LAN jack, display ports, and and SD card slot. I mean, Asus is pushing the limits of what a smartphone can achieve and actually a level beyond that. So that to me is awesome. Oh, and I should also mention that in the box, you get this Aero Active Cooler, which again, uses the side mounted ports to attach to the phone. It has an active fan that is designed to lower the surface temperatures on the device by four degrees while boosting clock speeds on the CPU as well. It also has a USB Type-C pass-through port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which I think is important because as you can probably hear, these fans, they do get loud. So you don't want your teammates listening to that versus your actual vocals. Uh, and the other thing I wanna mention is that this does come with a kink stand. So it'll be nice. It's a nice little handy feature uh, for watching movies. Speaking of which, this phone has two front facing speakers and they sound absolutely amazing. It's by far the best sounding speakers that I've listened to from a smartphone. Uh, and when you pair that with something like this, you've got yourself like a really nice portable movie theater or home theater. Uh, I think I'm definitely gonna take advantage of this setup because it really is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, they did remove the headphone jack on the smartphone and I'm sure a lot of gamers might be a little disappointed with that uh, elimination because this is a gaming smartphone after all and a lot of you most likely end up using headsets uh, to use this phone without any accessories installed. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense because the ROG Phone 2 had it. Why would they eliminate something like this? I mean, Asus has designed this to be a gaming smartphone, but they decided to eliminate one of the most crucial elements that people or gamers value. Keep in mind that this phone still doesn't have support for wireless charging and it also doesn't have an official IP rating. So that all sort of makes sense because when you take a look at the internal components of the smartphone, Asus has packed it with layers of enhanced cooling uh, to make sure that the SOC's clock speeds stay stable during longer gaming sessions because this thing has like an actual air vent at the bottom or the top and you've got these two side ports as well. So I guess these are all some of the factors to consider, which is totally understandable. Now, after running some synthetic benchmarks and comparing it to my OnePlus 8 Pro, the ROG phone was faster and it made sense because, you know, they've packed so much inside the smartphone that you're ultimately looking for the best performance in terms of frame rates and things like that. So that's something that you value then this is the way to go. I mean, they've really nailed it in that department. This phone does support 30 watt fast charging, but given how massive the battery is 
Asus has implemented a few battery care options to extend its lifespan. So in this menu, you can enable slow charging limited to 10 watts, and you can also set the charging limit for less battery wear over time. You can also schedule charging, which is a nifty little feature. Now, I've only spent a couple of days with the ROG Phone 3, so I can't give you guys a full verdict on my experience with battery life on this device, but I have spoken to some of my friends in the tech community who've been using this device for a lot longer than I have, and they've been getting close to six and a half hours and nine and a half hours of screen on time, depending on their use case scenarios. So that is awesome. And I mean, for the specs that this thing packs, I'd say that's pretty amazing. The software experience for the most part is very close to what you get with a Pixel and OnePlus device. Asus has not loaded this thing with any bloatware applications uh, except for Armory Crate, which is the performance tuning app for the phone. In fact, when you're setting up the device, they'll give users the option to choose between a gamery style theme or a classic stock look, which is what I prefer. They have a dedicated theme store if you want to expand your options. You can also customize a few things within the UI, like changing the system navigation style to either gesture based or the classic circle, round, and square buttons. The Armory Crate software is like a game portal where you can choose what performance modes you'd like to enable within certain games. As you can see, there is a game library where I can launch a game or I can go into scenario profiles and fine tune different factors that affect the gameplay experience like touch sensitivity, refresh rate, performance, network, air trigger customizations, key mapping, macros. There's just so much you can explore. And then if I switch over to the console tab, this is where I can enable X mode, which overclocks the CPU and lets it stay consistently at higher clock speeds. Keep in mind that enabling X mode can affect battery life. You can also adjust the fan speed of the Aero Active Cooler, uh, system lighting, and that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not really sure what software support is gonna be like for the smartphone in the next two to three years, because when you look at the RG Phone 2, that phone just recently got the update to Android 10. Uh, so it's definitely not gonna be first in line to receive the best that Google has to offer. So that's something to keep in mind. Last but not least, let's talk about the cameras. Asus has updated their main camera with Sony's new IMX 686 sensor. Now don't confuse that with the IMX 689 sensor found on the OnePlus 8 Pro. The sensors do fall into the same category, but they feature different characteristics. You also get a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and a five megapixel macro camera. Let's start with the ultra wide. It does a pretty good job with dynamic range and exposure. Interestingly enough, when I compared it to my OnePlus 8 Pro, I noticed that the ROG phone captured true to life colors and it just gets white balance right. There's good detail as well, and it doesn't really crush the shadows that much, so that's awesome. Switching to the main camera, you'll notice that the ROG phone struggles to maintain dynamic range, even with HDR processing enabled. The skies do get a bit overexposed compared to the OnePlus 8 Pro. I also noticed that this phone tends to produce contrasty images by crushing the shadows a bit, but to be honest, I kind of like that look versus the 8 Pro. Again, these are all subjective, so you may end up liking one or the other, but I'd like to know what you think in the comments. Low light performance is actually pretty good as well on this phone, and I'm surprised at how well it was able to keep up with the OnePlus 8 Pro. The detail is present, colors don't get washed out. If I'm nitpicking, I'd say that it does fiddle around with white balance here and there, but overall, it's actually a really good system. The 24 megapixel selfie camera is great, it surprisingly captures my skin tones accurately, along with yielding excellent dynamic range. Uh, it does soften my skin a little bit, but overall, uh, I'm really happy with the results. So this is the front-facing camera test on the ROG Phone 3. Now, this phone can shoot up to 8K at 30 frames per second, but you do lose HDR and uh, image stabilization. Uh, but you can also shoot at 4K up to 120 frames per second, which is awesome. That is actually something that I've never seen from a smartphone camera, which is great. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's loaded with video features and uh, the sample, the footage looks really, really good. I love the dynamic range coming out of the sensor. Uh, also, this is a great test for the microphone quality as well. Uh, I, I think I'm really happy with the white balance or I guess the color signs coming out of the sensor in general. I think Asus has really done a great job for, I guess, a gaming smartphone. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. So there you guys have it. Everything that you need to know about the ROG Phone 3. You see, this phone gives me a completely different vibe. And that's because this isn't your average flagship smartphone that you'd walk into a carrier store and just buy right away. It's a class of its own, and that's essentially delivering the fastest, most powerful Android smartphone for $1,000. 
But let's not forget that this is a gaming smartphone first. And that's very important for you guys to remember because it isn't something that's meant to compete with OnePlus or Google or you know Huawei's. It's a gaming smartphone. And you might be wondering why would you spend that kind of money on something like this. While PC and console users may not see the point of mobile gaming, it's a massive and growing market. According to some studies, it will go way beyond $100 billion this year. The mobile gaming market is largely driven by countries like China, India, and other overseas markets, and it's slowly making its way into North America as well. But let's also acknowledge that a lot of this revenue is driven by in-game purchases because while a game is free to download, you're gonna have to sort of pay your way through to unlock achievements or certain packs and things like that to win uh, the game. There hasn't been much focus on the need for higher frame rates in mobile games, but as titles become more demanding, higher end hardware is necessary to push developers to do more. Even game streaming services like GeForce Now offer a broader selection of titles if standard Android games aren't your thing. Now, can this be used as a mini console too by plugging in a Bluetooth controller and outputting to a display via Type-C to an HDMI adapter? Well, this could be an interesting option, especially for someone who might not be able to have a PC or console, but still wants to play on a bigger display. So that's it for me, guys. Let me know what you guys think about the ROG Phone 3 in the comments. In fact, if you are in the market for an Android flagship smartphone, would you consider getting a gaming smartphone or would you just completely eliminate that off your list? I'm curious to know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.